family mode. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, first in a series of uh, two uh, webinars today um, on iMachining. Uh, the first webinar will be on um, 2D iMachining, and the second webinar, which will be on at 11 o'clock, will be covering um, uh, 3D iMachining. So I don't know whether you're attending both, but uh, they are quite different to each other. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Les. I, I'm one of the uh, technical engineers here at uh, SolarCam, based up in Barnsley, uh, which isn't quite so sunny as it normally is today. Um, okay, first of all, uh, let me uh, just do a brief introduction as to what iMachining is about. This webinar is only uh, scheduled really to last about uh, 10 or 15 minutes, but um, if you do have any questions that you'd like to ask, then please uh, email uh, alex at solidcamuk.com for any uh, feedback or questions that you may want to ask uh, later. Now for you uh, uh, guys who have already got SolidCam and are thinking about um, upgrading to iMachining or wondering what it's all about, basically um, the, the iMachining uh, idea is uh, to optimize the toolpath for a better efficiency. Uh, if you look at the on the screen there, we've got, I've got a little um, a little uh, screenshot there of uh, the idea of iMachining's goals, which is uh, a simplified simplified user experience, as you can see there. Uh, optimized toolpath, efficient cutting, and consistently higher metal removal rates. And that fourth one, that is what is the key, I think, uh, to iMachining. It it isn't magic. It is a very well thought out strategy um, to achieve uh, higher material removal rates. Basically, if you've got a lot of stock to take off a part, then you should be considering eye machining. If you're consistently having to um, whittle away at a billet to, to get the shape of, the, um, of your part and remove a lot of stock in the process, then this is the, this is the thing to be looking at. So, um, okay. Let's have a look at some of the aspects of, uh, of how iMachining is going to achieve that. Uh, there's lots of words bandied about like morphing spirals and all the rest of it, simplified user experience, etc. But what does that actually mean and what does it entail? Now what we mean by uh, a more efficient toolpath is um, a controlled step over so you don't over engage the tool you don't, you're not burying it in the in the stock to uh to try and uh, get as much off as you possibly can uh in a shorter period period of time uh which is uh, the, the actual idea but um you don't have to hammer the tool or hammer the machine to achieve this what we uh uh create in in our machine is is very very controlled step over they never are the same they're, they're not always even it uh, depends on the, the shape of the job, the shape of the stock that you're coming from, the shape of the profile that you're going to. So you also use the exact uh, stock material because our machining knows where the stock is. It knows what you're coming from. It knows what you're going and what you're going to. That's it. That's that's for both um, uh, 2D and 3D I machining. And you've um, got what's what it says here smooth tangent tool paths meaning that you, you, you're not always cutting parallel to the uh, profile that you're that you're machining it'll come at tangential angles arcs in arcs off etc to uh, to make it smooth so i'll just persevere with this um little uh, slideshow for you for a, a little bit more to sort of describe a little bit as to as to what it does or try and um try and show you so we, we, as, as as mentioned, we don't uh, over engage the tool. We don't, uh, or we very very vastly reduce air cutting times just for repositioning, uh, and we reposition as little as possible. And um, uh, non -t non tangential tool paths is 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 what we have uh, normally. Now with eye machining you can see that we have control step overs. The first graphic there on the left hand side, it looks like it's some child's just scribbled on the uh, on the part there, but that is the um, an optimized tool path where you, you can see that it's it arcs into the uh, to the pocket there. Okay, so what does this uh, what does this all mean in, in practice? 
what I'll do is I'll quickly uh, pop up a part here. Now, uh, for for speed, I've already do, I've already done the machining toolpath on this on this part. Now, if uh, if you want to see me demonstrate it um, in a, in a, a live fashion, I can do a, a if you want to request a, a a web demonstration, I can do a live uh, personalised web demonstration for you if you if you make this, these arrangements if you're in the office. But for the purpose of this demonstration, this this is a very simple prismatic part that I'm going to use for the 2D eye machining and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine around the outside and then uh, machine that pocket out as, as you might have guessed and we're going to do this with two different tools I'm going to use a large tool to, to whip the pocket the meat of the pocket out then I'm going to use a smaller uh, tool to, uh, to get in them corners there <clears throat> so what do we what do we need to tell um, the uh, the software then how, how are we going to uh, go about this let's have a look at the strategy that we've we've uh, created to do the outside I'll just quickly look at the toolpath there for the outside it is it is pretty straightforward you, there's not a great deal of um, if I just quickly uh, look at the front of that you, we're just going around that outside a couple of times there isn't any great uh, uh, shakes there but what it um, it does do is uh, it takes consideration of the stock that's already there so let's have a look uh, what what we need to do to tell tell the eye machining that now eye machining um, is basically a pocketing strategy so if you were to uh, put the geometry line on the, on that part and say there you are eye machining go and go and machine that for me it will try and do a pocket it, it's naturally a pocketing strategy so if you're coming from the outside You've got to tell it something a bit a bit different. Um, so, in our in our strategy, if I quickly just uh, show the uh, the geometry lines there, we have uh, two geom distinct geometry lines. Uh, one is the outside, which is where the stock. So you're, you're telling it this is my stock, and the second one is your geometry line that you're wanting to machine and that's that's how it knows that it's coming from the outside it says that, well there's my stock out here and there's me uh, there's my profile there and the, the reason it knows which is the stock is because it's the first profile and also you've you've marked it as completely open so it knows that it can come from that side and that's all you need to tell it as far as the geometry is concerned uh, the next thing to uh, do is obviously select your tool now in our machining uh, your tool uh, selection and, and your, your, your um, creation of your tool is very important because the three things that eye machining needs to know uh, to, to carry out its calculation is uh, you would set your machine up first of all you, you, you tell it uh, what power uh, is available at the spindle and uh, your maximum and minimum uh, feed and rapid rates and also it needs to know the the exact um, dimensions of the tool and the type of tool it is and also the material that you're cutting which um, obviously makes sense and from them three bits of information uh, at the eye machining uh, calculator is able to work out the best and optimize the uh, toolpath and feed rates and speeds etc for the, for the operation so you, you don't you don't necessarily have to select your own feeds and speeds you just let the eye machining do it so it's important to say to tell it how many flutes it's got for instance people often when they're de de defining the tool in, in solid cam they, they don't sort of go into that uh, great depth of description they just say yeah he's a, he's a cutter just uh, this is that what diameter it is and go for it but it's important that we have the maximum available flute length correct and the and the um flutes the amount of flutes that it's got and uh also the um the the topology of the helix angle etc and, and and the material that it's that it's made for premium carbide in this in this case so they become an important factor in eye machine because it uses that information uh, in its calculation uh, the levels is as you expect it is in normal normal uh, solid cam uh, strategy where you would just tell it it's minimum it's upper and lower level of your, of your cut the next thing is the technology wizard now this um, is uh, it isn't voodoo or magic or <laughs> anything like that but in in here is where it has decided to uh, create its its toolpath 
um, you'll see here that it's decided that that's that 19 millimeter thick uh, part it reckons it can do it all in one piece oh that's the one thing I did forget to uh, mention is what the material is made out of uh, so I can uh, I'll look at that in a, in a second show you what the material is but it's decided that it can uh, yeah it's quite happy to be able to do that all, in, all at one depth cut it's not going to mess about taking two, two bites at it the machining level this is the um, the aggressiveness of the of the cut basically it's uh, how big the chips are, are going to be your chip control and um, some people have uh, called it a brave meter which I think is quite a nice uh, nice way of calling it depends how uh, how well strapped down the part is as to as to how aggressive you want to be with your with your cut and you've got your speeds and feeds here that you've um, that, have, that have been uh, selected your maximum and minimum feeds and speeds the technology itself is is in here and you'll notice that we've got padlocks here that uh, uh, for the meaning that everything's grayed out and that these values have been calculated by the eye machining itself. This is because the wizard is on. If I switch the wizard off, these values are available to you to change if you so desire. Uh, the idea, though, is that um, you leave eye machining to do the calculation for you, you, and you do learn to trust it over time as to, 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 to do its thing. And this is what we mean by uh, minimum operator Input minimum program and input. You just uh, select your tool, to select your geometry. Say, there you are, have a go at that. And that's all we need to do. That's all we need to select. And from that information, we can now uh, we now get our our tool path. Sorry, I'm moving this about a bit. I hope I don't make it feel seasick. And uh, there's our there is our tool path. I'll just do a quick simulation on that. And you can see our our tool automatically approaches the job. At the, at the just outside the stock it'll get little space there and uh, it will then approach the job and arc round and uh, I'll do this rather quickly didn't mean to expect it to go that fast and it's not a great uh, fantastic tool path this it's not removing much material so it, it's quite happy to go around there a couple of times and increase the uh, the cut as it as it goes around and you'll see the uh, the, the uh, feed change as it goes around the corners okay that's not so complex the next thing is the uh, I'm going to do is, is the pocket uh, roughing operation and this is where we see our tool path really sort of change shape now if I can uh, zoom in on that for you uh, somehow there we go You'll see what it's doing. It's it's arc spiraling down there, uh, helically um, machining itself down into the bottom of that uh, uh, form there, and then it's opening itself out, spiraling out until it hits the it gets to this, the limits of the uh, pocket in the in the widthwise. Then it starts heading off in one direction. Then it'll head off in another direction. And to see that in action. I'll just quickly simulate that part. All I've done here is select this outer outer geometry line as its as its geometry, and that's 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 what it's that's what it's doing. So if I just have a quick look at the uh, technology that we've chosen there, uh, our as I say, our um, boundary, our geometry line is that outer line there, because it's a naturally a pocketing strategy. I only need to pick the one the one uh, geometry line in this case because it will automatically do a pocket. The tool is the same tool as it happens. Uh, the technology wizard, it's once again decided that it'll do that um, all in one step and uh, the technology itself is, is, I've just left it do, to do what it, what it does. So we'll simulate that and I'll just quickly step it at, at a time there there's our our stock as you can see and our tool is just approaching that from above and as as we can see it's helically milling down we've got our two milli safety distance then it's helically milling down into the bottom of that part and once it gets down to its full depth of uh, 12 millimeters or whatever it was it'll then start moving its way outwards 
to uh, open that space, really start opening that space out. We've got to our depth now, and now it's opening it out, as you can see. I'll just uh, do this from the, from the top so that you can uh, see it better. So it's opening that, uh, that hole out as, as fast as it can. It's uh, going up to its maximum feed that, it, uh, that it's decided. And it's heading off towards the, uh, the outer walls. I'll just speed it up slightly. And a bit more. There we go. You can see it's now taken on the shape of the uh, of the pocket, and this is what we mean by morph morphing spirals. I'll just stop it there. You can see now it's hit the um, limits of the of the shape there. It's left a little a little bit of uh, material on the walls there because we told it to. And uh, now what it's going to do now it's going to start heading off it towards one end of that shape. It'll concentrate on one side, which it is doing now. It, as you can see, it's uh, it's heading off towards the right-hand side. I'll speed it up there. You can see that it's doing that. Once it's hit that side, it'll then concentrate on the corners and get rid of the corners. Once it's done that, then it'll go back to where it was going and head off in the other direction and then do the same with them corners. So that's what we mean by constant uh, morphing spirals, and that's what that uh, what looked like child scribble, as I said, uh, what I actually means. So from that, what it's doing, it's uh, constantly climb milling. This is what the the rapid lines are, the rapid retracts are all the time because it's climb milling all the time. And uh, that's how it clears the uh, pocket out. So that's what we mean by morphing spirals, uh, arcing arcing in, um, not over engaging the tool, and arcing out again. So it's gentle ramping motion. For the for the tool for the machine, uh, very sympathetic to the machine, and it also uh, invariably uh, increases the tool life because you, you you're cutting on more of the flute length, and it's been sympathetic to the tool ramping in and ramping out. Okay, um, I've waffled on long enough about uh, about spirals and um, and and I two D I machining and the uh, the way it, the way it works. Um, I hope it's been of, in, of use to you, this, this webinar. The, if you do have any inquiries and you want to take the, uh, the, the thing a little bit further and apply it to something of your, um, of, of your own, we do have and we, uh, something coming up in the future very shortly, which we're, we're calling I Challenge, which basically means, uh, there'll be some mail shots going out shortly, I believe, but basically it means um, if you uh, have a part, that you already machine using the conventional um, machining methods, uh, you can challenge us to uh, reduce your your parts. It's a little bit of a competition for the winner, uh, but um, you can you can challenge us to uh, put eye machining on your part and uh, reduce your machining times. So that's uh, a little mail shot that's coming up in the future. But if you uh, do have any questions, please email Alex at solidcamuk.com or give us a ring here at the office uh, in Barnsley and we will arrange a, a web demo or personal demonstration of our machining for you. Okay, thank you very much everybody. Bye.